What's your image of North Korea? It's probably negative. My name is David Pluth, and I'm going to take you on a very quick trip of North Korea that I hope will open your eyes and your mind to this fascinating country and its charming people. I've got my foreign journalist's credential on my arm. I'm ready to go. I hope you are too. Let's get started. It's my first morning in Pyongyang. I look out the window and I see more than 500 military trucks in the street. It's practice for a big parade. We're gonna go for a ride in the metro. Let's go. It's like commuters anywhere. They're in a rush to get to the next train. They get off one train, run to the next train, run outside. Just, it's anywhere. <laughs> Our first stop is at the memorial statue of Kim Il-sung, known as the Great Leader. He led North Korea from its founding in 1948 until his death in 1994, when he was succeeded by his son, Kim Jong-il. The spirit of Kim Il-sung, the father, still guides the country. In the entrance hall of the People's Library, we're greeted by a huge statue of Kim Il-sung. I'm expected. They heard somebody from Switzerland is coming. The People's Library is a correspondent university for technical and artistic teaching and retraining. here at a, uh, an ancient Buddhist text. It was printed in 1377, I believe. It was the first Buddhist text uh, to be printed with metal type. Uh, it's an ancient classic. Uh, it's preserved here in the library. We go from ancient history to the newspapers read by Kim Il-sung and his son, Kim Jong-il. The Great Mausoleum. A huge complex holding Kim Il-sung's body. Cameras are not allowed inside. 
Kim's political life began just 12 kilometers away from here, in a plain cottage. Born in 1912, Kim Il-sung's birthplace is now a museum. His birthday, the 15th of April, marks the beginning of the Ararang Mass Games. The games are held in one of the largest stadiums in the world, the May Day Stadium. One hundred thousand entertainers take part, half a football stadium with flashcards. performance is just amazing. It goes on for two hours. It's like a complete history of Korea on stage. We're at the tomb of King Yangong, the ancient king who first united Korea more than a thousand years ago. He was a strong man with more than 30 wives and concubines. Deep inside his tomb are fascinating historical paintings. I'm told that behind these stone doors, there are still two steel gates that you have to go through, and there's 30 meters of walking on stone to get to the painting. And we don't have a key, so we're not getting in. But we'll come back and we'll try again. She'll have the key next time. <laughs> How long will it take us? How long will it take us? We head for Quezon. One and a half more, two hours. Okay, the drive should take us one and a half to two hours through the countryside. Uh, the Namde Moon Gate in uh, Quezon. In ancient times, it was the main gate of the city. You can see through the, to the busy street on the other side. We're in a major circle in the town. Um, lots of traffic here. As you can see. It's a nice gate. It's very beautifully made. Quezon is an ancient city. These old Buddhist temples were built during the Koryo dynasty in the Middle Ages.
At the end of the day, we check into our hotel, a beautiful traditional inn. So this is where I spent the night, in this uh, traditional, in, in Quezon, in this uh, very traditional Riacon style uh, hotel. Uh, it's cold here, um, being the end of April. This hotel has got um, either glass panels for walls or paper for walls. And I'm sleeping on this uh, futon style bed on the floor. Very comfortable. And the wonderful thing about it is that they heat the floor underneath and it's really warm and it's just luxurious. So on those cold frozen mornings you really don't want to get out of bed. So it was a real struggle for me to get up this morning to do this because I just was tempted to just stay here, right here, <laughs> all day long. We're driving to the demilitarized zone, just 12 kilometers away, the divide between North and South Korea. There are other foreign visitors. In the distance, I can see the American, United Nations, and South Korean positions across the border. After the Second World War, Korea was divided. Since the Civil War in the 1950s, the demilitarized zone has separated the North and the South. It's quite a frightening situation, actually. I mean, there's uh, enemy soldiers just there, a few kilometers away, thousands of them. They've been driving tanks across the border. Um, we're in what is really a war zone, there's no question about it. There's technically, uh, these two sides are still at war. Um, and we're going to see more of that as we go on. Panmunjom, the joint security area. North Korean soldiers position themselves in front of the negotiating huts, straddling the north-south border. And I'm standing on the demarcation line. This is the south, this is the north. I'm inside the building, we can do it here. Otherwise I can't cross. I'm on the south, I'm on the north. Just like that. Right here, north and south soldiers are face to face. Peace talks still take place, with both sides keeping an eye on each other. It's, it's kind of a comical situation in a way because these guys are looking at us with binoculars and they probably are actually look, listening to everything I'm saying as well. So I, I feel uh, like an honored guest on both sides. <laughs> We're back in Pyongyang, enjoying a day in the park. We're in this great park. It's a late afternoon. People are having a great time out here, playing badminton on their rollerblades having some ice cream over here. Um, it's just a normal day in the park for everybody. A little bit cold. Everybody's wearing sweaters, but we're all having a great time. I might have some ice cream later.
Pueblo, an American Navy ship captured by the North Koreans in 1968, is now a museum. So we're approaching the Pueblo, and the crew spent some time in prison. The captain, when he got back to uh, the United States, was court-martialed. Now today, if the crew of the Pueblo wanted to come here as tourists and visit their old ship, they can. <laughs> they should. <laughs> I've always thought that the difference between being on board a ship and being in prison is that in prison you get to read the newspapers every day. On board a ship you get nothing. Look at the conditions that these guys had to live in. I mean, it's unbelievable. More than 80 American crew members were arrested. The signs of the short fight are clearly marked. The crew was held for a year. Isn't this totally outrageous? We're sitting in a, a North Korean Pyongyang karaoke bar. <laughs> and getting loose, getting loose. Everybody's relaxing. We're standing in front of the Myung Han San Hotel. This is where I'm going to stay tonight. I'm on the 10th floor, I think, if I can read the key right. Like so many of the buildings here, it is monumental. Is that a rotating restaurant on top? Complete with a rotating restaurant on top. <laughs> Love it. Up on the mountain, we visit the Myung Han Buddhist Monastery. The temple grounds are more than 1,000 years old. This is one of the guardians of the gate. There are four statues like this. As you can see, uh, from my small size, this guy is big, he's huge. getting pronunciation lessons. We're in the Orion San Tsung portion of the temple. Uh, this is a separate building uh, full of Buddhas and I suspect Bodhisattvas. Um, it's typical East and Southeast Asian Buddhist art. No bells. He just got a happy face for us. Well, it's a museum. It's got to have a shop. Massage. 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 <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> massage. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. I think I understand. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
Okay, now we're gonna go for a walk in the woods. Oops. I wanted to see a hospital, so that's where we started the day. I'm having a good talk on the television set. Um, okay, I'm at the maternity hospital and I'm talking to this lovely young lady. Wave! <laughs> <laughs> and she's um, uh, the nurse for the maternity. And the fathers can talk to the mothers and the babies uh, through this television set and this telephone. <laughs> so we're having a great time. <laughs> We're going to take a little trip in the bookshop right now, see what they got to read for us. Looks like we found something. Han's been checking out all the books while I've been doing this, and uh, he seems to have found uh, some pictures of old Pyongyang. So we'll take a look now. Pyongyang was devastated during the war. Well, this is the city immediately following the war. It's a much different place today. We take a tour of the massive Workers' Party monument in the city. Thank you. This is a monument to party founding. Yes. Okay. This monument was unveiled on the 10th of October 1995. This monument has the round built structure surrounding three towers. Today, our people did not forget the present Kim Il-sung, even for a moment at all times, because he devoted himself for the happiness of our people. As you can see, we're enjoying another fabulous Korean meal um, with wonderful service, wonderful food, great beer, wonderful tea, and real fire water. This stuff is strong. More stuff is coming. Even more. And we haven't even got to the main course yet. Oh, please, 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 please! <laughs> more food. More food. <laughs> I'm going to sit here until I have the recipe to make these things. These are fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. What do you, what do you say in Korean? Mandu. Mandu. It goes on forever. We've just been brought some hot stuff. <laughs> hot, hot. I will probably make a trip to North Korea just for these, and I probably will. <laughs> now, wait a minute. The recipe. <laughs> I need the recipe. You have to write the... Ask. 
ingredients? I'm serious. I tell you, I'm not going to leave this restaurant until I have the recipe. <laughs> so please, please ask the chef to write it down. I'll, he doesn't have to do it right now. We're at the National Film Studio, and at last we made it. We were running a little bit late today, so we're very, very lucky we got here. I'm told this place is incredible inside. It looks fantastic. It's huge. Now, film is an incredibly important um, educational and entertainment uh, device in North Korea. Uh, Chairman Kim Song Il himself has written books on the art of the cinema. So we're really looking forward to getting inside and seeing what they've got, and they can show us how they're making films here. This is North Korea's dream factory. You can be a movie star too. Visitors can dress up in movie costumes and play the role of their heroes. <laughs> okay, do you feel like a movie star today? <laughs> this is really amazing. I mean, they even have this street complete with cinemas and, and, and dry cleaners. It's, it's like a real city, but it's a set. It's a movie set. It's really, really, it's really crazy. I mean, I've been on movie sets before, but this is really a movie set. Now they tell me we're going to Western Europe. They said I might find my own house there. I have to say, this is a pretty good representation of a Western European house. It looks like my neighborhood in Switzerland. Um, it could be almost anywhere in Germany. It's, it's not bad. I could live here too. There's another dream factory to visit, the Children's Palace. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. I have to get the mic on you. Just, just, just wait, okay, and then you can do it, okay? We're at the famous Children's Palace. This is, this is the location where children come for education in sports, literature, art, and music, and computer science, and uh, many different things. But I'll let one of the children themselves explain what, why we're here. The aim is to develop the talent of young prodigies, whatever it is. The training is really intense and rigorous and extraordinary discipline.
At the end of the performance, there's a tribute to Chairman Kim Jong-il. Well, that's the end of our shooting. We just did our last shots in uh, Pyongyang, and now we're headed back to the hotel. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the trip. I've enjoyed the trip a lot. Uh, I'm going to go back to the hotel, pack my bags, and uh, we're heading out to the airport early tomorrow morning. So for me, this has been a great experience, and I hope you've uh, enjoyed yourself. I'm coming back here, and when I do come back here again, I hope you'll join me as well. Cheers. We'll try again later. I hope that the wind comes up. We're here at the tomb of the of the king who uh, united uh, Korea in 918, and um, we're about to enter. This stone here was erected, so to speak, uh, on his death, and it is exactly what it looks like. I'll get out of the way so you can see it. It's got a hole on the top, I'm told, and there's water in there. <laughs> so it's it's the real thing. He was a strong man. He had six wives and 36 concubines, or 23 concubines, and probably some other people who just came in once in a while to help him out. Um, so, just a second, just a second. It's not over yet. There's one more thing. Remember that restaurant? I got the recipe. <laughs>